Hello, and may I extend you a very warm welcome to our worship here online on YouTube from St. Martin in the Ball Ring, Birmingham. Thank you very much for joining us. And may I greet you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A little later in this act of worship, I'm going to be uh, leading us in Holy Communion. And if you'd like to join in in your own way at home, you might like to pause this recording for a moment, go and get some bread, wine, fruit juice, wafer, whatever's going to help you. And then you can join in in your own way uh, wherever you're watching uh, this service. Also, just to say, you might like to grab a Bible as Stephen is going to begin the first of our Advent series of sermons. Uh, and he's going to be speaking from Paul's first letter that he wrote to the church in Corinth. So Stephen's going to be talking about that a little later. And then after that, Ralph is going to be leading us in our prayers of intercession. One little notice as we begin. Can I say a massive thank you to everybody who's managed to bring uh, shoeboxes, Christmas shoeboxes to the church? I'm, I'm delighted to say that we've managed to get over 50 shoeboxes, which is in, in the circumstances is really, really good. Um, so I don't know who sent this one in, but it's lovely. It's for a boy age five to nine, and it's full of the most wonderful, exciting things that some child's going to open and absolutely love. Um, I love the Spider-Man picture. Uh, some lovely pens and crayons, some woolly hats, and they've also printed off a little barcode, which means they'll know uh, where their present is going to end up in the world, which is very exciting too. But the good news is, is that because of the lockdown, Operation Christmas Child have decided to extend the opportunity for people to donate shoeboxes. And so uh, it's still possible, if you wish to, to go to the shops next week when they reopen, fill up your shoebox, uh, and then this will be sent to some uh, much needed child somewhere in the world who will be totally blessed this Christmas by receiving a gift from you. So if you still want to do that, uh, look online on the Operation Christmas Child website and it gives you all the information you need to join in this wonderful, exciting project of love and generosity. So please do that if you get a chance. Today is Advent Sunday and Advent Sunday has always been one of my favourite Sundays. I guess because as a child it was always the time that Dad got up the loft, got down the Advent uh, calendars and uh, Mum would make some Advent, uh, Advent wreath with some candles and we'd be beginning to get really super excited about Christmas. And despite all the uncertainties uh, and difficulties and challenges that are facing us all, I'm still a little bit excited about Christmas and I hope you are too. With the announcements this week, we now know that we can resume worship here next Sunday on the 6th of December. So for those weeks of Advent leading up uh, to Christmas and then we will be giving you information both online, by email and by letter about all the things that we're planning for Christmas this year. So I hope we can have a little bit of excitement and a little bit of joy. And please be reassured that we're going to be recording uh, worship every week and throughout the Christmas season so that for those of you who are not able to get into church or it's safer for you to be staying at home, uh, then there'll be an opportunity for you to join in as well. Because Advent is exciting. It's not just about building up to our celebrations of the birth of Jesus, Jesus coming into the world, God incarnate, Emmanuel, God with us. But it's also a season in which we remember that one day, one day, all the suffering, all the sadness, all the death will be gone. Because why? Because we believe that Christ is coming back. He's coming back this time as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, not as a hidden little baby in the quiet, dark streets of Bethlehem, but this time in a blaze of glory, so that everyone will know that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue profess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we long for that day. And in Advent, we pray for that day. We look forward to that day. And we'll do so in our worship and in our study of scriptures and in our praying together. But as we begin, we're going to light the first 
of our Advent candles. As we enter eager and expectant into this season of Advent, we look forward to celebrating the birth of Jesus, our Saviour and our King. In Advent, we watch and wait for the return of the King and long for the coming of his kingdom with glory and power. Each Sunday in Advent, we shall light a candle on our Advent wreath to remind us of important people who responded faithfully to God's call and who helped prepare for the first coming of Christ. Today, we light a candle to remind us of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and all the patriarchs of our faith. God of Abraham and Sarah and all the patriarchs of old, you are our father too. Your love is revealed to us in Jesus Christ, son of God and son of David. Help us in preparing to celebrate his birth, to make our hearts ready for your Holy Spirit, to make his home among us. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Lord Jesus, light of the world, born in David's city of Bethlehem, born like him to be a king, born in our hearts at Christmas, be king of our lives today. In prayer, in praise and in song, we give voice to our hope that Jesus will return and his kingdom will come.
in St Paul's letter to the church in Rome, he wrote these words. You know how late it is. Time is running out. Wake up, for our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on the shining armour of right living. Because we belong to the day, we must live decent lives for all to see. Clothe yourself, therefore, with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. Let's be quiet together for a few moments. Let's reflect on those words of scripture before we join in our prayer of confession. So we pray together, Almighty God, long-suffering and of great goodness, I confess to you. I confess with my whole heart my neglect and forgetfulness of your commandments, my wrongdoing, thinking and speaking, the hurts I have done to others and the good I have left undone. O oh God, forgive me. For I have sinned against you, and raise me to newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Bright God of Advent, blaze in our darkness, incinerate our iniquity, light up our road. Riddle the ashes of our desires, rekindle in us justice and love. Wake us up, recreate us, surprise us, challenge us, that we may be ready to greet your light and walk with joy through each day. Amen. St Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. May the God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. I always thank my God for you and for the gracious gifts he has given you, now that you belong to Christ Jesus. Through him, God has enriched your church in every way with all of your eloquent words and all of your knowledge. This confirms that what I told you about Christ is true. Now you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly wait for the return of of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. God will do this for he is faithful to do what he says and he has invited you into partnership with his son Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, my name is Stephen. I'm one of the members of the church's worship team. I'm one of the lay members and it's my privilege to share a few thoughts about the reading that we had this morning. As you know, today is the first day of Advent and so the reading that we've got today and for the next two weeks is looking at some of the well-known Bible passages around the topic of Advent. Advent is a time when we prepare and look forward to celebrating the Nativity, the birth of Jesus, and also looking further forward to the eventual return of Jesus Christ. Just before we continue, let's just pause and pray. Lord, I ask that you'd give me the right words to speak, that you'd speak to us in our hearts and our minds that we may be ready, that we may learn from you. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The title for today's 
sermon is eagerly waiting. And I want to just spend just a few moments looking at three different things in the passage that reminds us about how we can wait and be ready both for the coming events at Christmas, whatever they may look like, and also to be ready for the eventual return of Jesus. Waiting is something that we have to do now and again. I, I hate waiting. I don't like waiting. I don't like joining queues. If I see a queue in a shop, not that we go to shops at the moment that often, then I won't wait in a queue. I'll avoid them. It's not my style of doing things. There are different kinds of waiting. Sometimes we can be waiting for a letter to arrive, something that we are expecting, we want to arrive. Or maybe it's something a result from a test. Maybe a bit more fearful about that. Maybe sometimes waiting for something that, or anticipating something that might happen but don't know when. I often remember back to the time when we had a small earthquake in the West Midlands, a long time ago now. I can still remember the feeling of walking across the room and the room shaking. It was uh, during the night. And I often think for those people that live in areas where there are lots of earthquakes, the sort of anticipation and the fear they must have thinking, when's the next one going to be? And almost continually being on edge and waiting. The kind of waiting that we see in our reading today is one where we're to look forward with enthusiasm and with certainty. Corinthians 1 and verse 7, just first part of our reading, it says, as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. So this waiting is for a specific purpose. It's waiting for Jesus. Jesus, who we know in the fullness of time, came as a child. We we'll celebrate that at Christmas, but also it's the same Jesus who promised to return. Sometimes we forget that waiting on God can be good. Isaiah verse 64, some words there, talks about how God rewards those, how we can do just great things as we wait on him. Let me read those words. But as for you, O Lord, since ancient times, no one has heard and no ear has perceived and no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. So here Isaiah says that no one in the whole world has heard or even perceived or even seen a God who acts for someone who waits apart from the God of Israel. And that's the God that we eagerly wait for. It's a God who acts for those who wait. In our time of waiting, we have a God who wants to act, a God who promises, a God who wants to give good things to us. Our call to wait is not a call just for you and me individually to wait, it's the call to the whole church, to wait and be ready as part of the body of Christ, waiting for his return. And if you look at the beginning of Corinthians, right at the beginning of the, the letter that we've already read, then it says this, it says, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be his holy people, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. And so the letter goes on. And so what you see is that what Paul is writing, he's writing first to the people of Corinth, to his call to be his holy people. And then secondly, he's writing to all those everywhere who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the exhortations and the things that we read in Corinthians are for us as a church, as part of the body of Christ. During this last month, I've been using a set of reflections written by a South African pastor from the 1800s. His name is Andrew Murray. And the theme for November has been waiting. 
as part of the theme of waiting on God, he brings out the idea that we don't wait just on our own, but we can also wait on behalf and with others. In one of the sessions, he writes this. What we all need is the living assurance that waiting on God can never be in vain. Let's pray for all who wait on God as part of our waiting on him for ourselves. So here's Andrew is encouraging us to, as we wait on God, pray for others. You pray for me. We pray for each other that each of us will experience something of God at work in us as each of us wait. And he goes on to say that this is part of one of the ways that we can show love for each other. And it's how we can build up the body of Christ. So he says, so we shall help to bear each other's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. There will be introduced into our waiting on God that element of unselfishness and love. Although we can't meet together, it's difficult to meet together at the current time, although we're doing that on Zoom a little bit, we can, in our own waiting, still be thinking of each other, bringing before God each other that we might grow as the body of Christ. The third thing I want to just uh, highlight is the fact that as we wait, we are strengthened. So in our waiting, God is at work in us. And you can see that in verses eight and also later on in verse nine as well. So here in verse eight, I've just highlighted two words that emphasize the fact that God in some way will strengthen us during our waiting. He will also keep you firm, solid to the end. And the result of that, so that you will be blameless on the day of Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. Part of our waiting, part of our preparation, part of our eagerly looking forward to God results in Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, working in our lives, keeping us firm, keeping us, preparing us so that we're ready for him. Another thing that we learn from these verses is that God is faithful and he'll complete the work that he started. And you can see I've highlighted the words in bold. So let me read it again. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. And this shows us that we can be confident that God will finish the work that he's doing in us. That at the end, when Jesus returns, his work will be complete. A while ago, we read some verses from Isaiah that reminded us, told us that um, God acts on behalf of those who wait for him. And part of that waiting is strengthening that we've learnt of already. But there's another part, and that is God shaping us to be fit for his purpose, both in this life and in the next. And the Isaiah reading that I read early on has another verse. You are our father and we are clay. And you are our potter. We are all the work of your hands. And in our waiting, God can also mould us. He can put his hands round us as if we were clay pots. He can mould and shape us into whatever he wants us to be. So at this time of Advent, we can eagerly wait on God, waiting together because we know that God will strengthen us during this time of waiting. 
and that he'll also mould us and shape us to be the way that he wants us to be. Let us pray. Holy Father, we wait eagerly on this first day of Advent, the anniversary of your coming and birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks and praise for sending your Son to save us from sin and adversity. Let us not get stressed by all the hype of Christmas. Let us simplify our lives by making more space for us to grow closer to you by giving you space to grow in us. Let us not forget the promise of our Lord's return, the second coming, when he will wipe away all sin and suffering, wars and pandemics, anger and hatred. That time is not far away. Lord, we turn to you, confessing our sins and transgressions. 
and open our hearts to you for your cleansing and everlasting forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our church at St. Martin's and all churches where your name is honoured. We pray for the ministry team, that you will bless them with wisdom and understanding to guide your peoples with righteousness. We thank you for those who give their time in the upkeep of the church, often unnoticed or acknowledged. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our Queen and her government, that they may have the wisdom to lead our country with fairness and tolerance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, at this time of global sickness and pandemic, we pray for the NHS and all those who are risking their lives for the sake of others. Protect them, Father. We also ask that the work of the doctors and the scientists to find a vaccine be guided by your hand. We pray that the vaccinations due to start soon will be successful in preventing the spread of this virus. In your holy name we ask it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving and caring Father, we pray for those who are stricken with illness and pain. We ask for your healing for those on our prayer lists and also for those suffering alone or unloved. Show your healing and mercy to them, Lord. We pray also for those who have lost loved ones. Bring your peace to those families in the knowledge that their loved ones are now above all pain and suffering and in the care of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, we end our intercession with the prayer Paul writes to the Hebrews in chapter 13. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip us with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory for ever and ever. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us, to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because when Jesus humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed long ago and opened for us the way of salvation. So now we watch for the day, knowing that the salvation promised us will be ours when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. 
Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And so as our Saviour taught us, we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. The blood of Christ. At this time of Advent, fire our imaginations with the sweep of your salvation. Catch us up in the cause of your kingdom already breaking into this world, yet waiting its final fulfilment when Christ shall come again. And let your spirit 
wild as the wind, as gentle as the dove, move within us and among us to enliven our worship, strengthen our faith, and send us out with anticipation and joy. Generous God, you have fed us at your heavenly table. Kindle us with the fire of your spirit, that when Jesus comes again, we may shine like lights before his face to the glory of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon ye. Scatter the darkness from your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you know and love now and always. Amen. As we await our coming Saviour, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>